Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Praying Through the Psalter, a brief daily meditation upon the 150 Psalms of Scripture. Today, in our 56th devotional, we turn together to Psalm 57. As you turn with me to Psalm 57 in your Bibles, let me remind us of the three chief ways that we understand the Psalms. First, the Psalms are prayers of the Lord to us, His people on earth, to make our own, to pray back to Him. Secondly, the Psalms teach us how to pray. And I want to point out two particular teaching points in Psalm 57. And thirdly, every Psalm brings us to Jesus Christ. Psalm 57, as you see in your Bible and the inscription above it, comes in the context of a very difficult time in David's life. King Saul seeks to destroy, to kill David, and so we're told at the beginning of Psalm 57 that David escapes and hides in a cave. So David teaches us that in times of great stress and, and danger, when our lives are threatened, when the world seems like it's crumbling around us, what do we do? We cry out to God and lament. We say, Lord, help me. I've got so many enemies right now. Please, Lord, help me. But Psalm 57 is not only a prayer of lament, it's also a prayer of great praise. David helps us to learn that every time that we pray and cry out to God for help, we also almost always have reasons to cry out to God in praise. So our prayers then become, Lord, please help me. But also, Lord, I pray this prayer of help because you are so great and loving and I praise you. That's the first thing to point out in Psalm 57. The second is how David emphasizes certain points in his prayer. It can be helpful for us when we pray to God when something is really on our mind, not just to say it once to the Lord, but to emphasize it by saying it a second time. It's not that we have to do that to get God's attention, but it just helps to press the prayer deeper into our heart. Uh, we find this double emphasis on certain parts in verses 1, 3, 7, and 8. Verse 1, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful. You see how David's emphasis on mercy just drives that prayer deeper in his heart. Uh, verse 3, God will send out from heaven and save me. God will send out his steadfast love and faithfulness upon me. Again, the double emphasis that God will send out his love and faithfulness just gives David extra assurance. Verse 7, my heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. So this helps build the very fact that his heart is steadfast. And then verse 8, Awake, my glory. Awake, O harp and lyre, to give thanks to you, O Lord. And so David is reminding himself with a double emphasis that he wants to give glory to God. So the first two things about this psalm. Number one, whenever we pray a prayer of lament and a cry, a petition of help. Let us always add to that a prayer of praise. And secondly, it is sometimes good in our prayers to emphasize certain petitions of prayer, to drive them deeper in our heart, that they may become a more powerful gift to us even as we pray them to God. And then there is one final teaching uh, aspect of Psalm 57. Um, that's very important. David is praying with confidence that God's steadfast love and faithfulness will save him and help him. But David is crying out publicly as a witness to the faithfulness and love of God. Listen to verse 9. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the the nations. And so David is giving a public witness to God in this prayer. And then in verse 11, what's the result of this? Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. 
And so when we give a public witness of our prayers that God is faithful and that God is steadfast love will help us. And we pray this in a way that, that the world can, can hear how confident we are, not in ourselves, but in God, then the world begins to listen and God gets all the glory. So there is then a missionary aspect of our praying that we pray for personal help, but we always pray that our prayers will lead to more glory for God. This world is in desperate need to hear God's people cry out to Him for help, but also to cry out to Him in praise. This world is desperate to have its attention turned from evil and darkness to the Lord that He may be glorified and that we may be praised. So in the midst of the strife that we're in, the coronavirus pandemic, the racial tensions, the economic stresses, of course we cry out for help, but we do so with a cry of praise and we do so publicly by bearing witness to others that God is faithful, that God is the Lord of steadfast love. When we do that, God receives the glory and the world is blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, dear brothers and sisters, and give you his peace. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.